Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to Perth Airport. Hopefully you'll have seen my Indian Pacific Railway trip where it took me four days to go all the way across Australia from Sydney to here in Perth. Today I'm doing the reverse. It's going to take just over four hours. We're heading from Perth to Sydney in Virgin Australia's economy class. Enjoy the video. I was surprised to find that despite its relatively modest size, handling about 13 million passengers a year, Perth Airport has four terminals. My flight left from the domestic area of Terminal 1 and Virgin's check-in counter is just before the escalators to security. It's mostly self-service and self-explanatory and once your bag is on its way, you can head straight upstairs. Virgin Australia allows all economy passengers the opportunity to buy their way into the business class lounge. At Perth, it's 55 Australian dollars on the door. That's about 29 pounds. It was a Sunday morning and I generally prefer to avoid paying for hotel breakfasts and instead get a couple of hours downtime in an airport, which is my reason for checking into the lounge and of course, to show you around. The food and drinks options were pretty good inside the lounge with a selection of cold cuts for breakfast and some very good and very necessary coffee from Grinders and even a couple of hot choices for food if you really wanted it, bearing in mind this was midsummer. It's all included of course and being a Sunday morning the lounge wasn't terribly busy. The departures board informing us of only about a dozen Virgin Australia flights leaving this area of the terminal all day. The lounge has excellent apron views too. I got a glimpse of the Fokker 100 I was originally booked on. Long story, I was due to go to Sydney via Adelaide on one of these, but the schedule changed and I was plonked on a direct flight instead. Maybe next time. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN virtual private network. There are loads of good reasons to invest in a VPN, but I find that leveraging lower prices online, keeping safe on public Wi-Fi and accessing blocked content are the three top ones for me. There are loads of other features on Surfshark too, including an automatic whitelisting facility, industry leading encryption and a kill switch in case you lose internet connection. But during lockdown and quarantine, you're probably going to find unblocking locked content the most useful of all. It's annoying when websites won't let you look at content because of the country they think you're in. Turn on the VPN, select the country of your choice, and there you go, content unblocked. Head to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 85% off and three extra months for free. Domestic departures happen in a single pier here at Terminal 1, which is spacious and airy, and pretty much everything you could want from a domestic terminal. Terminal 2, which handles regional and interstate services, is not far from Terminal 1, but Terminals 3 and 4 are located across the runway here. Our aircraft today is a Boeing 737-800 named after Nobby's Beach in Newcastle, New South Wales. Fokker 100 enthusiasts might want to know Alliance Airlines operates a fleet of them for mining charters, but your best chance of flying one as a regular member of the public is on Virgin Australia's regional airline fleet. They have 16 such examples of these aircraft. So here we go, the next four hours travelling to Sydney, a journey I took four days to do on the train. Let's see what Virgin Australia is like.
the rearmost rows having boarded across the tarmac, my seat in the last row was easy to find, 30A, which does come with a little room to recline guilt-free. There are 168 economy seats in a regular 3-3 configuration, some of which have extra legroom and are branded as Economy X and available at a small supplement. Fortunately, my strategy of booking the last row paid off. Nobody really wants a middle seat in the last row and it often goes unsold. More room for me. Behind the purple partition at the front of this 737, there are just eight business class seats in a 2-2 configuration. After takeoff, we climbed bumpily over the huge railway lards at Kewdale and turned gradually eastbound, giving us a good look back at the airport, as well as Western Australia's biggest industry, mining. Today's flight took exactly four hours in the air, covering 2,038 miles on a very direct route. Seating on Virgin Australia is 31 inches on these 737s, which is reasonable, and the seats are 17 inches wide. All pretty standard, including the fold-down table with a sliding mechanism. On domestic flights, Virgin allows free use of the Wi-Fi, which allowed me not only to track our flight, but also to reconcile major landmarks out of the window with Google Maps. This dark area forms part of the Frank Han National Park. And it's not just me that finds looking down on civilization, or the lack of it, fascinating. Virgin Australia also solicits good photographs from their passengers through the in-flight magazine. Much has been made of the future of this airline, but when I travelled in December 2019, the route map was extensive across Australia and the region, including some Pacific Islands. In the next video on the channel, you'll see me fly Fiji Airways in their new A350 in business class up to Nandi from Sydney, but that's enough spoilers for now. Even the lowest fares on Virgin Australia include things like checked and carry-on bags, seat selection, and importantly, on longer routes like this, complimentary meals. There's still a menu to buy sundries, so if you really feel compelled to have a colour-changing gin and tonic, sure, go ahead. The meal was hot and served in a nice little tray. I was pleasantly surprised with it. A good portion of beef with peas and potatoes, although for me, mash has to be one of two things, either very buttery or full of pepper.
overall a good economy class meal and more than you get on most four hour trips in economy with most European airlines for sure. Having had a solid lunch as we crossed the Great Australian Bight, I knocked back a beer as we crossed Port Lincoln, supposedly one of Australia's wealthiest towns. Remember from my Jetstar video that you can see the state border between South Australia and Victoria? Well, I obviously filmed it a second time, I'm not quite sure why. Just, I guess, it's so unusual to see a land border from the air. People tend not to like the back row of the aircraft because the toilets are quite close by, but with two on hand back here there was never a queue on this flight. Each toilet is small but not uncomfortably so, and was clean even though this was taken near the end of the flight. Just before our descent there was another drink service of tea and coffee, and a look at a still very orange Sydney which was still in the grip of bushfires when this was filmed. So in summary, this flight cost me 270 Australian dollars, about 145 pounds one way. Not bad considering that included my baggage, seat selection and a meal on board. Overall, a hassle-free and comfortable flight and I hope Virgin Australia sticks around because I'd be happy to fly them the next time I'm down under. Don't forget, go to surfshark.deals forward slash it for 85% off and three months extra for free of Surfshark VPN. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.